Hey crafty people, it's Tasha here. Today we're going to be making two cards using loads of gorgeous new release goodies. We're going to start with the mixed media backgrounds. So I've got here an A2 panel of Tealicious cardstock. I've got the Feeling Frosty stencil held in place with some memo tape from behind. This is just so that I can stencil across the whole panel. I'm using some paper glaze, going for a tone on tone kind of look, and I'm applying it with a mini ink blending foam. I was testing to see if this made it easier and smoother to add through a stencil, and honestly, I loved it, so I would definitely recommend. I don't want to have too much on my foam because I want to make sure that I don't force any of it underneath my stencil so I'm dabbing it onto my glass mat to get rid of the excess before I actually take it to my project. To get into all those snowflakes I'm doing a kind of dab and twist motion. If you saw my release video over on my own channel you'll know that when I used a palette knife with the Feeling Mighty Pine stencil I did lose some of the detail so I was wanting to avoid that here for sure. I got a much better result with this technique, so this is definitely a keeper for me. I set it aside to dry completely before moving on to the next step. It doesn't take long to dry at all, but I left it about two hours to be certain. Now I'm going to add some ink over the top, concentrating my colour on the edges, leaving a highlight in the centre of my panel. I also wanted to bring those snowflakes through even more, so I grabbed that same Feeling Frosty stencil, but I turned it to give me different positioning of the elements. You can just keep turning 90 degrees to give you new positioning to get a fuller flurry background. And if you clean it, you can even flip it over for even more positions. I love that about this stencil design. I'm going for more tone on tone with my ink selection, but I wanted to amp up the drama a little more, so I grabbed a navy to add to the very edges, then I smoothed out the blend by going back to that original teal shade, still leaving that highlight in the centre. I gave it a quick wipe to get any ink off those paper glazed snowflakes. I die cut my sentiment from some more of the tealicious cardstock and um, a glitter cardstock from my stash. Uh, this is the Jumbo Merry Christmas sentiment from the new release. And I'm going to make a scene using images from Trim the Tree, but I'm also using these adorable critters from Campfire Critters and repurposing them to be decorating the tree. It's fun mixing and matching across your heavy doodle collection just to pull images that work together to create the scene that you've got in your mind. I think these cute critters fit perfectly with the Trim the Tree accessories. I've used foam adhesive to give some dimension to the scene and I'm nestling it directly on top of the sentiment just to pull that into our scene as well. A few final decorations and our scene is complete. Although, after I finished filming, I went back in to add some more snowflakes and you'll see how I made those shortly because they're leftovers from card number two. Let's try that same glaze application with a much more detailed design. This is the Snowstorm stencil. It is absolutely gorgeous, but with all of that detail, I know it's going to be tough spreading any kind of paste without disturbing any of those spindly bits. So rather than kind of swiping or twisting, Rather than any kind of swiping or twisting motion, I'm just literally dabbing the glaze on there, making sure I don't have too much on my foam at a time. And when I peel this back, you'll see just how well that worked. I want to step up this glaze even more though. So I'm adding some super fine crystal sparkles, just pouring them all over whilst that paste is still wet and then tapping off the excess onto some scrap paper and then I'll funnel that back into the jar. Now set aside to dry fully. Once fully dry, I'm grabbing a soft paintbrush and giving the whole panel a really good sweep and dust onto some scrap paper again. 
You want to get off all of the loose glitter that could end up all over your recipient. So don't be shy with this. Swipe it in different directions and give the panel a few good firm taps too. Now you can see that that glitter isn't covering the glaze. It's just adding something extra that steps it up even further. Let's go back to those snowflakes. These are the snazzy snowflakes and I've also got the scripty Merry Christmas die on there too but I'm not going to use that for this card. These are really detailed dies. I'm using my Heffy Doodle mini die cutting machine and I'm cutting into cardstock with adhesive on top. I did run some of them through twice to get a clean cut but some of those little bits within the flakes still weren't cutting. You get a thin plastic assistant sheet with your mini die cutting machine, which is perfect. It gives a little bit more pressure for these intricate kind of dies. So I added that to my sandwich. So it's plate, paper, dies, thin plastic sheet, plate, and that worked an absolute charm for those most intricate bits. You can see how easy those little bits are just popping straight out now. More glitterification now. <laughs> Peeling off the release paper and pouring over it those crystal sparkles for some white sparkly snowflakes. Then for some contrast I decided I'm making some silver ones too. So sparkly, so good. Just burnish the glitter into the adhesive and gently rub over them. That way you won't have any stray flakes breaking free later. Let's assemble the card. I'm trimming an eighth of an inch off each side and adhering it onto a white card base for a nice border around that busy background. Then I chose the Winter Wishes Shadow Cuts for my sentiment. I think this one is perfect for those non-Christmas related but still winter themed cards. After all, snowflakes are for so much more than Christmas. <laughs> I'm applying a generous amount of glue bit because that's a really textured surface that I'm adhering onto. And once I've got everything in position, I'm gonna leave something heavy on top whilst it dries to maximize our chances of getting a really good stick. That's my second card finished. Look at that beautiful detail in the background. It's it's just so gorgeous. So that's two examples of tone on tone mixed media backgrounds and how I turn them into two very different cards using products from the new release of Heffy Doodle Goodies. Why don't you drop us a comment below letting us know your favorite product from the new release. Don't forget to like, share, follow, all the things. Thank you for spending this time with me. Have a lovely, happy, safe and wonderful week. Stay crafty. Bye.